When most people think of Viking engineering, they jump to ships slicing through the North Atlantic, or longhouses lined with carved rafters. But there's a little-known technique, one almost never highlighted in popular documentaries, that mattered even more for daily survival in the far north. A method so effective that in the worst Arctic winters, when wind could skin exposed flesh in minutes and snowdrifts hardened like stone, Viking builders could still trap enough heat inside their homes to sleep under a single fur. And what makes this secret genuinely exciting is that it still works today. Modern Arctic homesteaders, Canadian off-gridders and Greenlandic traditionalists continue to revive versions of this method because it's simple, low-tech and shockingly efficient. The Vikings mastered it out of necessity, but anyone can replicate it with nothing more than soil, turf, timber and an understanding of how heat actually behaves in freezing climates. Now let's break down exactly how the Viking insulated wall trick worked, why northern builders trusted it for centuries, and how you can apply the same principles in modern shelters, cabins, and even preparedness situations. The Viking wall wasn't a simple barrier. It was a living insulation system. Archaeological digs from Iceland to Greenland to Norway reveal the same pattern. Rather than relying solely on timber, which was scarce in many northern settlements, the Vikings built walls using a combination of timber framing, stacked turf blocks and densely packed soil. What made this design exceptional is that it created a wall with multiple layers, each performing a different function. The timber frame offered structure. The turf provided compression and low thermal conductivity, and the interior soil or moss packing acted as a wind-tight barrier. This created what researchers often describe as a thermal mass sandwich, heavy enough to store heat, yet resistant enough to slow the escape of warmth through the wall. In a modern sense, you could think of it operating like a thick adobe structure, except designed for cold rather than heat. The real strength of the Viking system was that it didn't rely on soft fibres or fragile materials. It used density, weight and airtight layering. Those thick turf blocks, when dried and cut properly, trapped countless tiny pockets of air in their root structure, which dramatically improved insulation. Heat couldn't easily pass through, and cold couldn't easily penetrate. Arctic builders trusted turf and earth walls because they harnessed natural thermal mass. Unlike wood, which contracts cracks and shifts in freeze-thaw cycles, turf walls absorb moisture slowly and release it gradually, making them ideal for harsh climates. When settlers arrived in Iceland and parts of Greenland, they quickly realised that hauling in wood for every structure wasn't feasible. Instead, they adapted what the land offered. Dense soil, grasses, and compact turf that could be cut into blocks with a long-handled spade. The thermal mass effect of these thick walls meant that a Viking longhouse could maintain stable interior temperatures long after the fire in the centre hearth burned down. That stability kept food stores from freezing, protected infants and elders, and made long periods of darkness survivable. Even sagas mention homes thick-walled with earth, a nod to how essential this technique was. Not just architecture, but life support. The beauty of this system is that it wasn't simply thick for the sake of being thick. Vikings understood that heat loss happens through three pathways. Conduction, convection and air leakage. Turf and earth walls slowed all three. First, the thickness reduced conduction. Second, 
the compressed layers prevented internal air movement. And third, the mass kept drafts from penetrating, something even modern cabins struggle with if not sealed correctly. One archaeological reconstruction in Iceland demonstrated that walls around one metre thick could keep interior longhouse temperatures up to 20 degrees Celsius warmer than outside, without modern insulation, vapour barriers or synthetic materials. The method relied purely on physics and patience. This isn't just historic trivia. If someone is building an off-grid shelter, a winter cabin, a root cellar, or an emergency cold weather structure, this method remains one of the most effective low-tech insulation options. For example, a modern adaptation uses a timber frame, then fills the cavity with compacted earth mixed with dried grass. After that layer firms up, builders apply an exterior of turf slabs or sod bricks. This combination mimics the Viking sequence frame for strength, earth for mass, turf for insulation. Another example applies directly to survival situations. If stranded in freezing conditions with only basic tools, someone can cut sod blocks with a shovel or axe and stack them against the outside of a temporary shelter. Even a simple lean-to can be transformed into a heat-holding chamber once it is bermed with turf. The thermal mass captures warmth from a small fire or even body heat and holds it. That's why polar researchers sometimes use snow trenches lined with soil or turf where available. They're borrowing straight from the Viking playbook. Understanding this technique gives modern viewers a true appreciation for northern resilience. Learning how Vikings insulated their homes isn't just about construction. It's about understanding how people thrived in places most today would consider uninhabitable. Their survival depended on ingenuity, observation, and a willingness to work with the land instead of against it. That's why turf houses survived Iceland storms for centuries, with some still standing today. These weren't primitive dwellings. They were master-crafted climate shields built from the simplest materials imaginable. If you enjoyed this deep dive into old-world Arctic engineering and want more researched, field-tested history content, make sure to subscribe to the channel, share this video with fellow history lovers, and help keep this knowledge alive for future explorers.